Okay, so you should have your notes taken for questions one through five. Uh, sorry, I skipped a number here, but the first um, couple of questions through armature should be complete. So now it's time for you to figure out what you want to do for number six. So how are you going to use symbolism in your artwork? Um, it's up to you. Uh, you can bring it in in the shape of your animal. You can bring it in through the details that you add to your patterns, or you could bring in symbolism through the colors that you choose to use, or it could be a combination of all three. But you should have some sort of symbolism within your design. So as I got started, I took a look at um, the PowerPoint and I looked at um, the different animals, um, the different uh, symbols that I could pull in into my patterns, and I also looked at different color options as well. And so I settled on the idea of a dragon um, because a dragon symbolizes luck, power, and wisdom. And then I thought I could bring in stars for inspiration into my design or rainbows or moon. Um, the rainbow equals hope, the moon equals time. Then I started to think about colors. Um, blue is my favorite color and I love that it also symbolizes peace. Green um, symbolizes growth and balance. Um, violet is creativity, yellow is joy or energy, and orange is confident or bravery. And these are all things that I would like in myself. So I'm gonna use um, those symbolism into these colors and um, symbols to help bring that into my alabrique. Um, once you have decided on your symbolism or your approach, um, you could choose to look up um, some inspiration on your computer. Um, you do need to sketch it from two different views, okay? And so um, it could be a front or a back view if you want to and a side view, okay? So for my creature, I'm gonna just start to sketch kind of the shape that I was thinking. I found it easiest to sketch my creature from the profile first. And then as I was sketching, I thought about the general body shape. Um, remember, it has to have at least three appendages. So I have arms, legs, and a tail as well. Um, and then as I was going along, I also added wings. So mine technically has seven different appendages. Um, I also wanted to think about how I could make my form interesting, so I decided to add some spikes on the back of my uh, dragon as well. And then once I got finished with the profile or side view, then I actually decided to sketch it from the back view because I really wanted to have some space to think about my patterns on my wings, on both sides of my wings. And so I tried to um, show that from both views. As you are sketching, make sure to think about what features you need to include to make your animal um, inspiration clear. Um, so for example, if you're creating an elephant, you'd wanna make sure to include the big ears and the long trunk. Um, another thing to keep in mind why we are sketching from two different views is to help us think about what our creature will look like from any angle. Remember for this project, we wanna make it interesting from any view or interesting from any side that it is looked at. Once you have your form figured out from both views, then start thinking about what kinds of patterns or designs you would add to your creature. Now remember, if you want to include any of your symbolism through your patterns, be sure to include those um, into your designs. Um, one of the things that you can also consider is the shape of your form or the contours of your form. So I took inspiration from the actual shape of the dragon. So from the wings, you can see I created a border around the outside edges. And then um, from one of the points, I created kind of the teardrop shapes. You can also layer your basic shapes to make them more detailed. So for example, I created those um, raindrop or teardrop shapes, and then I put dots within them. My outline around the outside edge of the wings, I added detail to it by adding lines or stripes to it. Um, you can see that I have curves following the shapes of the legs and the body. Um, you can see that I've added um, some concentric shapes into the spikes on the back of the head. And I try to repeat my patterns throughout in order to create a sense of unity to help make it feel like my um, different pieces or different designs all belong to the same creature. As you start to design the face for your creature, um, it's important to think about uh, what type of expression you want on your creature's face. Now for mine, I wanted it to be more of a friendly dragon than a fierce or mean looking dragon. So that's why I curved the mouth up. 
um, but I also wanted to include the teeth showing um, to show that it could be fierce. So in our um, Canvas course, I have uh, included a caricature packet um, that includes some different animal faces that you could also look at for inspiration as you are planning out the face. Remember, you want your face to be detailed and to have some personality. Once you are finished designing your alabrije, then you want to take and plan out your colors. So remember, think about what symbolism you want to use in your colors. Um, and also think about what colors will give you contrast. So for example, I used um, light greens in areas and then had it contrast with the dark blues. Or in other areas, I had the orange contrast with the dark greens. So think about um, what colors can help your different details stand out and where you want the details um, to catch our attention most. And don't forget one of the requirements is that you repeat your colors throughout your creature as well um, and also that you have your designs and patterns added to all sides to add interest. If you have any questions during the brainstorming process, please let me know.